What's up, everybody? Tom Pelissero here with Judd Zolgad. Shortly after the Vikings, somehow, some way, find a way to pull out a 26 to 23 victory over the Jacksonville Jaguars in overtime. Uh, Judd, we can get to all the things that went wrong, and there were a lot of them for the Vikings in this game from the very early going. But mm -hmm. they found a way to win the sort of game they lost over and over and over last season. That's not how you draw it up. You don't right. want to be in that position again. Right. But they did find a way to get a win in a game that they had to win. Well, and confidence-wise, how big is this? Because this team, I'll still contend, is not that good. Last year's team was bad, right? But they lose to Tampa Bay. They blow the halftime lead. They lose to Detroit. You could just see the confidence after those losses last year seeping away from mm -hmm. this team. Today they played a Jacksonville team that, let's be honest, once again, is not very good. This is a game of the few games I think the Vikings will win this year. This was definitely one of them. But the fact, the fact that they blew the lead late, 20 seconds left, and they looked like they were absolutely going to be dead, and that Christian Ponder leads them down the field to a Blair Walsh, Blair Walsh field goal. How important is that too, Tom? Because really, when you look at this team, right, it's going to be about small things. Christian Ponder did something today at the end of that fourth quarter that I don't think there's any way he does last year. Christian Ponder was getting booed the first three drives of this game. Every incompletion was being booed. He finishes 20 of 27 for 270 yards and a 105.5 yeah. rating. He was very good after, I'd say, about the first quarter and a half. For whatever reason, there's something with Christian Ponder where the less he thinks, the the better he plays. And mm -hmm. you can say that for a lot of guys. But with Ponder, I think it's, it's a really important fact to note. The moment they got in that two-minute drill and they moved the ball late in the first half there, all of a sudden you saw a completely different sort of a tempo and an urgency to the offense. He said he had to go back to the sideline and sort of tell himself to up the urgency. Well, I don't know why you wouldn't come out with that in the first place. Right. But clearly there was something different. I think that a lot of it comes down to when he starts aiming the ball, when he's not getting his feet set, the best thing he can do is have a drive where he doesn't have time to sit back and agonize over every throw. He just goes out and does it. They drove down the field and they got a touchdown before the half. They really shifted some momentum in this game. Don't you think, too, Tom, that this team... Last year, look at all the close games. Look at everything that went wrong. And today, I felt they came out pretty uptight. I mean, Ponder had the, uh, I think it was a 15-yard pass to Kyle Rudolph to start the game. Mm -hmm. Then they didn't have another first down until the second quarter. The defense was out there on the field for that first Jacksonville drive forever. Mm -hmm. I just felt 17 that, plays, 72 yards. Yeah, and I just felt the Vikings came out, and they didn't look sure of themselves. They looked like they were waiting for something to go wrong. And you know what happened? Then they got a couple stops. Then they started to get some offensive momentum. And of all, all of a sudden, I had the feeling that they're thinking to themselves, okay, we can sort of do this. It's not going to be last year repeated. Now, it might be eventually, but I did feel the confidence started to flow today. And let's be honest, too. These first two games, Tom, you're playing Jacksonville and Indianapolis. If you're ever going to you establish... Be relevant. If you're ever yes. going to feel good about yourself, you've got two opponents that you can feel good about playing. And we'll see what happens when they go down to Indianapolis next week, taking a young team on the road for the first time. You saw a bunch of things here that I think are going to be concerning. Number one of which, on the offensive side of the ball, not having a true downfield threat. That's something they're going to have to overcome, at least for the next couple of weeks while Jerome Simpson's out. Michael Jenkins comes up with a huge catch late in this mm -hmm. game. Devin Aromashidu comes up with that 26-yard catch uh, when the Jaguars were just sitting back in that soft uh, cover two look. But they don't have anybody who's going to blow the top off a of defense. Right. And so that allows teams to bring more heat down on Percy Harvin and Kyle Rudolph. What I didn't get with the Jaguars was... Why did they back off of Percy Harvin at certain times in this game? That two-minute drive late in the first half, not only are they playing soft on him when the Vikings are throwing those screens out there, right. they blitz the slot man and make him the hot read on right. one play. That's the easiest thing in the world is ponder, just to throw a 10-yard pass to Harvin and let him go to work when he's got nobody in front of him. And didn't we learn again today about Percy Harvin? you got to use him. Just use him. He's unbelievable. I don't care. I, I he's don't one of care. the most unique guys in the NFL. I don't care how smart Bill Musgrave or any offensive person with the Vikings thinks they are. This is basically, is this not schoolyard football? Yeah. Percy Harvin's on your team. You've got to use Percy Harvin. If you, the second the ball is in Percy Harvin's hands, odds are more often than not something good is going to happen. So for all this, let's distribute the ball around. Let's get creative. We're an NFL offense. We should be doing X, Y, and Z. No. What you should be doing is getting the ball to Percy Harvin. But you know what? He is not the story of the day offensively. There is only one story, and it's a great one. No, and it's Adrian Peterson who comes up and has, I, I don't know what his final numbers were. I'll look those up real quick. 17 carries for 84 yards and two touchdowns. He has a 20-yarder. He made some cuts in this game where you looked at him and you said, that's Adrian Peterson. I think there were other times where they were trying to run out the ball outside with him, or you can see that he's still trying to get back. I don't even want to say confidence in the leg, but just that extra little bit of a burst to get around the edge. Right. Boy, when he was in traffic there, some of the moves he made, it looked like Peterson. And to have him in the goal line. That, that brings us back to something else. You, tell me, you mentioned Bill Musgrave out smart, trying to outsmart people. Mm -hmm. There were times in the red zone where I'm not sure what some of those drives were. 
and you had confusion. You had two guys running a route into the same spot at one point. Yep. You had one sequence where it was a run to Percy Harvin, yep. a flat pass to Matt Asiata, and then a throw to John Carlson, who was covered on basically a one-route type of a play. Mm-hmm. Bizarre stuff. How are you not getting the ball yeah. to Percy Arvin in space or running the ball with Adrian Peterson? Those are the things that people are going to be questioning, I think, when it comes to Bill Musgrave's offense, is what exactly is it that happened in some of those big situations? There was one play, you're right, where Harvin and Aroma Shadu ran the same almost identical route, and I couldn't yeah. tell who the intended receiver was. Right next to each other. I still don't know. There was another red zone a play where they brought Harvin out, which I, under no circumstances... Unless Harvin and Rudolph should be on the field at all times in the red zone. Unless Percy just ran 45 yards, there's no reason <laughs> to take Percy Harvin out. But the Peterson story is a fantastic story. Let's look at this. I mean, I realize he had eight and a half months, so the recovery, while remarkable... Not even he, that much, a little over eight, right? But it's not unprecedented. But let's be honest. He tore his ACL, his MCL, and what looked like a catastrophic knee injury, look at it. He missed one game. He missed the Chicago game to end last season, and he is back already. What this guy is able to do i got to be honest, he is wired, I mean, pro athletes are wired differently, I think, but this guy is wired about ten times differently than most people. It is phenomenal what he did today, because there were a few carries early on where I said, all right, this is, this is going to take a while, this is going to be a work in progress. By about halfway through the game, it looked Toby like Toby Gerhardt couldn't down, get on the field. Down, yeah, Toby Gerhardt couldn't get on the field, and Adrian was Adrian so much down to the point where he was actually losing yards once every about eight <laughs> carries, which is Adrian. Because he's trying to cut back the football. Yes. Yeah, I mean, he's a guy who is a, a very unique athlete, and somebody does things that a lot of people don't think you can. I still wonder if we're going to see the true pers- or the true Adrian Peterson. There was another time where it looked like he was going to be able to shoot a gap, got cut off at the second level. I think that was his 20-yard run. And so does he have that next burst? Will he have that at any point this season? I don't know. But certainly he's going to be a focal point within this offense. Everything I've been led to believe was he'd get five, seven, maybe 10 carries in this game. He gets 17. He yes. played a lot of the game. And he said the original plan in his mind was to get more carries than that. It, yeah. is, it is a great story. Uh, Blair Walsh, how about that one? Rick Spielman's got to be feeling pretty good today about that draft pick. For him to walk out and hit a 55-yard field goal there. And also the kickoff. So let's not underestimate that. Late in the game, yep. the Jaguars take that lead with 20 seconds to go. What yep. happens? Josh Scobie doesn't get the kickoff deep. Matt Asiata feels it as the up man returns it to the 31. All of a sudden, you're 11 yards closer than you should be. Mm-hmm. It's little things like that that you appreciate when you watch Blair Walsh putting the ball in the end zone with good hang time and hitting a couple of really big kicks for him, including that 55 yard. And being the naysayer that I am, I said those were the ones that Blair Walsh wouldn't make yet. He might make them eventually. He made them all today. In the second half, he could not. He had almost every type of pressure kick right that you could think of. An overtime kick, mm-hmm. fourth quarter pressure on. He made them all. Good for him. Yeah, and on the defensive side of the ball, I think especially early on in the game, you, you saw some concerning things. The tackling was not good. You saw Mr. O. Raymond get run over. You saw Harrison Smith get run over, which we don't think should happen. That bothered me. Mr. O. Raymond giving up a touchdown in the end zone as well. Mm-hmm. Chris Cook on a play where he doesn't have bad coverage, but I said it when that ball was in the air to you. I said, oh, my God, he blew the coverage because yep. you could see he settled on something. He was looking at something to the inside on that play. All of a sudden, that receiver drifts outside. Blaine Gabbard's pass to the outside shoulder. Cook never gets his head around. It's a touchdown against cover three. I mean, we saw them get burned in those sorts of situations. They were playing Kansas City last year. Right. It looked almost exactly like that. Cook took a pass interference penalty. Cook explained it after the game. I think what happened was, if you watch the replay, Gabbard gives a little pump fake. It's just a little pump fake, but it's to the inside. So Cook bought on that and started to cut, and the receiver didn't cut. He's in a three-deep look. I know. No, he, but he I'm just saying. the top, yeah. Well, hey, hey, you know what? This defense... Work in progress. I mean, this secondary yeah. is still a work in progress. This this is not... This Josh is Robinson feel- did some positive things today, but they're throwing underneath that coverage quite a bit. A lot of single high looks. I thought that was interesting, too. Rolling those safeties down. I would urge Vikings fans to enjoy this victory. Seriously. <laughs> because you don't know... You don't. This season might be really interesting and intriguing, but it's going to be up and down. MVPs of this game. Blair Walsh is one. Adrian Peterson clearly is one. Brian Robinson on the defensive yes. side of the ball, I think, deserves a game ball because he's a guy who he, had a, he knocked down a pass on third down. Yep. He had a lot of pressure in the backfield. If you look for the guy who was around the ball the entire game, yep. Bryson, Brian Robinson was that guy on a day where Jared Allen, after getting that early sack that was wiped out by the offside penalty, really was relatively quiet in this game. I got a feeling when you do your film review, Kevin Williams also had a pretty good, pretty good game. He recovered that fumble. I think he played pretty well inside. Uh, Brian Robinson also, I'll say this one, Jared played the whole game again. He really didn't come out much at all. Brian Robinson came out. Was that the first half? Second for, series, for, second or third series. For yeah. a significant amount of time, they put him back in on third down, and he went in and got some big-time pressure. So yeah. so maybe this maybe this resting guys a little bit because they've got some depth. Not the worst idea in the world. Particularly Brian Robinson because he's a guy, when they signed him, they did not expect him to be mm-hmm. an 83% a game sort of a guy. Any final thoughts? 
No, that's it. That's it. It was a heck of a game. I'm curious it really to see. was. I'm curious that's to see. That's the key thing. Hey, and exciting. you know what? You know what? After last season, after watching a 3-13 and team that managed to blow every type of lead they could and was just down in the dauber all year, today's game, I'm telling you, if you're a Viking fan, enjoy it because at least it was entertaining. Just and they didn't sell out, by the way. They're already one-third of the way to their win total from last season. I picked them to win this game, and I also picked them to win four games all year. So what does that say about the difference? They're going to win more than four games. He is Judd. I'm Tom. Full Vikings coverage at 1500ESPN.com. We'll see you.